I got a mind to talk about Texas Chainsaw Mask of the Next Generation. You shut up there! What's going on guys and welcome to another reputized video! Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation was directed by Kim Hinkle and stars Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. After a high school prom, a group of teens gets into a car crash in a backwooded area in Texas where they run into Leatherface and a psychotic group of family members. Yeah, I know. It's the same. I know. I know. This film wasn't as strong, I felt, as the last one as, Tex as Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I felt like they lacked a lot in this, but, you know, we all have our own opinions. Jenny, played by Zell Wager, I thought she did a good job. You know, I liked her in Me, Myself, and Irene, and I, that's about the only other movie I've seen her in. But in this film, I think it was her first film, and I thought she did a good job. She played, like, the real shy type at first, but then, like, by the third act, you you see a, like a huge difference in her and uh, this character definitely does change for the better. She becomes stronger and more focused on what she wants and on how to survive. I thought she handled her own. McConaughey's character, Velmer, he plays the family leader and the most psychotic out of them all, even more than Leatherface, I think. He's got a leg brace, which is weird. They never really explained that. You know, Leatherface had a leg brace in the third one, but he doesn't in this one. But I think this film is, like, within its own. It's It doesn't really connect. Although there are, like, a few references to the original, but that's it. That's weird. He wears a leg brace in this, but kind of his character does. And he's really crazy. I, like I said, I really would not F with this character. Joe Stevens plays W.E. Slaughter. Well, their last name is Slaughter in this. Then it was Sawyer, then it was Hewitt. They, they changed a lot. But he plays a guy named W.E. Slaughter. And he plays like the historian. So if you want a history lesson before you die, that's the guy to go to. Because he quotes all these famous quotes from like past presidents. And he, like, he does that a lot. And I think that's okay, but you know, he, he's, it, was, it was okay. Okay, Robert Jacks is the guy that played Leatherface in this, and I gotta tell you, he wasn't all that intriguing. He wasn't all that... He didn't scare me as much. He didn't entice me as much as the guy that uh, played Leatherface in the third one. He just, he wasn't that scary. He was more... I don't know, they, they feminized him too much. And it, it's like, you, 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 what were they thinking? Now, I do admit, when he first appeared on the screen, he did kind of terrorize me a little bit. He did kind of scare me a little bit. He was like, oh, there he is. What's he going to do? He's behind that lady sitting on that bench outside of the house, sniffing her hair. As the movie progresses, he, chain he puts lipstick on, he changes the face, and he even has a chest with boobs. What? Seriously? Why? Why? So, yeah, it wasn't that strong to me, and I just, I, I really didn't care for the way they portrayed Leatherface in this. This film was made on the most smallest of budgets Hollywood has ever done. According to the director of photography, it was made on such a low budget that unlike most productions which has, like, separate trailers for each actor, they had to share a camper that one of the producers had all in one. So you had like the makeup and up front, then you had like a table area for the hair and the and like the bathroom for like the wardrobe. That's it. I don't know how many people worked on this movie, but the cast mostly had to share like a camper when they were on set. And that's how low budget they were. They didn't have the the niceties the accessories, like the heater and like a fan and all that. So it was really hot 
on location where they were filming by day. But at night, it was cold. But in a way, I think that added uh, a lot to the film. It added a really good tone, a really good vibe to how the film looked. So I gotta give it that. Because they didn't have the necessities that most productions have, for a film like this, I actually think it benefited it. It made it look more dark. It made, like, there's fog around, and that was real fog, actually. It wasn't done by a fog machine. Like I say, it was a low budget. They couldn't afford to rent most things that a movie needed. But for for a movie like this, with it, with the weather conditions being the way they was, I think it worked out perfectly for them, even though they were miserable most of the times, like the actors being in that hot and cold weather. I think it benefited, like, the way it looked. And another thing I hated about this movie is, yes, there was several chase scenes with Leatherface and the main character with the chainsaw, but he doesn't even get to use it on anybody. What the hell? They wanted to stay away from the gore. I, and I get that. It's all about the mind. They want you to theorize what happens. But even in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they used a chainsaw on someone, but they figured it out how to not make it bloody. And they couldn't even use the chainsaw on anybody on, in this film. I mean, it's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre for a reason. <laughs> Another thing I hated about this movie was an Illuminati character. He just shows up out of the blue and he just tells them what to do. Does this sound in any way familiar? Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. There was like a cult in that that was controlling Michael. And as I've said in that review, you can't do that to an iconic character such as this. Now this movie came out back in 1994. And I, I guess The Curse of Michael Myers took note of this film is the reason why that film was the way that was. I don't know. But I hate it when they do that. Just let the characters be. What the, What's the whole point of them trying to control all these characters when you know they have their own? I mean, honestly. So yeah, that character was just a complete waste to me and it was just dumb. I didn't really grasp that concept. If I was Leatherface, I'd have just chopped him up right then and there. I wouldn't have cared. And that's how you're supposed to have Leatherface be, is just this mindless, psycho, psychotic, face-wearing, chainsaw-wielding maniac. All bets are off, folks. Come on. Kim Hinkle's direction and writing really did frustrate me, folks, and this is why. This is the same man who actually helped Toby Hooper write the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre back in 1973. That really frustrates me because why would you go do like a real good classic film such as that to doing something like this and making as many mistakes and really dumb stuff as this film was? Now, I get the fact that this man was trying trying something new with this film, and I, I, I give him props for that, but he, he overdid it. He, like, some of the dialogue was just cheesy, and it, it was just dumb. The characters in it, some of them was just a complete waste, like the Illuminati character. I just, I really don't get where this man's head was from from going to do something as classic as the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was straight to the point. There's one that's no controlling bullcrap, and Leatherface was more menacing in that, to doing something like this. I, just, I, I don't understand, folks. It's, just, it's really frustrating. This film is just, it wasn't worth it. I, I wouldn't check it out if I was you, but... I always say be your own critic. I always encourage you to be your own critic. So please, go out and watch this. If there's like nothing else on, then be my guest. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I, that's what I'm here for. But guys, in the end, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation gets a C. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this review. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and get reputized, and also share even. What did you think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Stay tuned for more reviews coming soon. Peace the rip out.